Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Michael here for Tactica Imperialis with another Codex Analysis Astra Militarum video. Today we are doing unique HQs, that is the named HQs so in the HQ section. And we start with Commissar Yarrick. I should point out if you want to see part one then make sure to follow the link in the description at, or check out the Codex Analysis playlist if you want to see some other codices such as Tau, Necrons, and Space Marines. Uh, I have done some codices that have been updated since. So, Commissar Yarrick. He is Weapon Skill 5, Ballistic Skill 5, Strength 3, Toughness 4, 3 Wounds, Initiative 3, 3 Attacks, Leadership 10, and a 4 plus Armor Save, which is pretty good by Guard standards. He's 145 points, and he comes equipped with Carapace Armor, 4 plus Save, Bolt Pistol, Storm Bolter, Close Combat Weapon, Power Claw, which is basically a Power Fist, Frag Grenades, Crack Grenades, he also has two heirlooms of conquest, the Bale Eye and a Power Field, which if I just quickly go and look, gives him, here we go, the Bale Eye is a 6 inch range, strength 3, AP3 pistol. It is a short ranged hotshot LAS pistol, is the one of the best ways to put it. Um, and the power field gives him a 4 plus invuln save, which is the best invuln save in the Imperial Guard army, pretty much bar none. He has the Warlord trait for Draconian Disciplinarian, meaning that leadership tests around him are taken on his... Is it on his leadership? No, it's automatically pass leadership tests on, um, combat, on casualties caused by shooting and possibly melee. So that's a pretty good trait to have. Or of Discipline, so everyone within 12 inches is Leadership 10, and his unit is Stubborn. Um, chain of Command, so he cannot be your Warlord if there is a Senior Officer in your army. So if you take a Company Command Squad, the Company Commander is your Warlord, Yarrick is not. Bear that in mind. He's an Eternal Warrior, so he's very hard to put down. An Independent Character, Preferred Enemy Orcs, Senior Officer, so he can issue um, two orders in a turn. Summary Execution, which I really, really, really wish you didn't have, so you can execute characters, and Voice of Command, which allows him to issue orders. He also has a rule called Iron Will, and this means that if he dies, uh, he, he loses his last wound, place him on his side instead of removing him. At the start of your next turn, roll a d6. On a 3-up, he gets one wound back. Place him pretty much exactly where he was, remaining more than one inch from an enemy unit, or impassable terrain. On a 1 or 2, he is dead. So, it's... a He's got a Super Necron Resorb, is one of the best ways of putting it. Um, I'm not dead keen on his shooting. I mean, he's Ballistic Skill 5, but a Storm Vaulter isn't amazing. A Strength 6 AP3, uh, Strength 3 AP3 Pistol is okay. What you want him for is, he's a buff. He gives everybody around him um, better leadership. Everyone around him um, is very hard to make run because of um, shooting or casualties. He's an Eternal Warrior. He's got a 4 plus invuln. He can get back up. He's very hard to shift, and even if you do fail a leadership test, he does have summary execution, which as much as I hate it, he does. And he can issue orders, so it's very hard to make models around him go down. The next one is Lord Castellan Creed and Colour Sergeant Kell. The two of them are pretty much interchangeable. Well, they're not, but they both come as standard. As I don't believe you can take them separately. I'm just going to check if you can actually take them separately from one another. In the old code codex, you could swap one in and one not but um ah if a company command squad includes creed it may replace one veteran with kel that's how it works and you cannot take a regimental standard if you take color sergeant kel so that makes sense i was just unsure as to how it would work so you don't get kel unless you take creed so creed is weapon skill ballistic skill four strength three toughness three three wounds initiative three uh, three attacks, leadership 10, and a 4 plus save. He's a company commander. They can't really say any more than that. And he has carapace armor, two hotshot las pistols, frag grenades, and a refractor field. So, 5 plus invault save. Uh, he has voice of command, which is excellent. And he has supreme commander. Uh, he can issue up to three orders a turn, which is absolutely brilliant. He can issue orders that can only be issued by models with senior officer, because he doesn't actually say he's a senior officer. Failed orders must be re-rolled, which is absolutely excellent. He also has Tactical Genius. If Creed is your Warlord, he has two Warlord traits instead of one. You can either roll twice on the same table or roll once each on two different tables. If rolling twice on the same one, re-roll duplicates. This is fabulous. So Creed doesn't have a set trait. He has two traits and you can roll for them. Um, some of them are good. Some of them are bad. 
I definitely take one off the guard table because there are some really good guard warlord traits. Uh, I'll just go and remind myself of all of them because I'm probably going to need to do that anyway. Doot, 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 doot. Here we go. So you might get outflanking and preferred enemy. You might get um, draconian disciplinary, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, you may get um, four orders with an 18 inch range if you're lucky, which is absolutely excellent. So Creed has a lot of versatility, but it's slightly random versatility. Kel, on the other hand, is weapon skill, this is skill four, strength three, toughness three, two wounds, initiative four, two attacks, leadership eight, and a four up save. More of a veteran sergeant stat line, possibly with a slightly better weapon skill and a high initiative of four. He has carapace armor, las pistol, power sword and power fist, frag grenades and regimental standard. So you can attack with a power sword to strike an initiative four with three attacks, or a power fist to strike with two attacks and an initiative one, but strength six. I would generally recommend you go power sword unless you need AP two or strength six. Um, he has the rule, listen up maggots. If Kel is in the same unit as Creed, I'll add to English in a minute. Leadership test for orders issued by Creed may be taken on Kel's leadership, not that of the ordered unit. So if you're issuing to a leadership seven infantry platoon, you're actually taking it on leadership eight. It used to be it was on the officer's leadership, i.e. Creed's leadership 10, but that doesn't happen anymore. But it's a nice buff. Uh, sworn protector. Kel must declare a glorious intervention when possible and will automatically pass the test to take the place of a friendly character in an ongoing challenge. So if Creed is challenged out, Kel will step in in the second round if Creed survives. He also has a rule called Lookout R. I, it, I'm not really sure how to say that without screaming. If a wound is allocated to a character in this model's unit other than another model with this special rule, that character automatically passes Lookout Sir, if it can make one. The wound must be allocated to the model with this special rule instead. Uh, if there is more than one model with this rule in a unit, when a wound is allocated, the only player can choose which of the ones to reallocate the wound to. This is good because it keeps wounds off Creed, but it's bad because it was every single wound on Kel until Kel dies. Which, when you're toughness 3, 2 wounds and a 4 armor save and no invulnerable to speak of, means he dies very, 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 very quickly. It says to, it does say to a model, oh sorry, character in this model's unit, I stand corrected, sorry. Uh, so it's just on Creed, or if you attach a Commissar or something, it will also affect him. And he has a Regimental Standard, which I'm just going to check uh, what that does. Uh, melee. Regimental Standard. Uh, regimental Standard uh, gives plus one to combat resolution. Um, and in addition, any friendly units within 12 inches may re-roll, fail, morale, fear, and pinning tests. So that's good. And for the two of them, you pay... I've got faster scrolling, but it's still not great. You pay 80 points for Creed, which is absolutely excellent, and 75 points for Kel. Kel is slightly too expensive for me, but you are having to factor in how much a regimental standard costs, which is 15. So Kel realistically costs 60 points for plus one weapon skill, plus one wound, plus one initiative, plus one attack, plus one leadership, plus one armor save. So he's actually not that bad, and it'll be a good way to keep Creed alive for at least two more shots. Then we have Colonel Ironhand Strachan. This guy is 130 points. Yeah, 130 just for this guy. He's weapon skill 5, ballistic skill 4, so he's nearly Yarrick. Strength 6, base strength 6, toughness 4, 3 wounds, initiative 3, 3 attacks, leadership 9, and a 3 plus save. This guy is better than a space marine. I'm not kidding, this guy is better than a space marine. Um, he takes the place of a company commander, same as Creed. And he has flak armor. Yeah, he has a flak armor, but he has a three-up armor save. Plasma pistol, shotgun, close combat weapon, frag grenades, refractor field. Mm. Shotgun and plasma pistol are nothing special. I suppose a plasma pistol could be useful. Refractor field, it's a refractor field. It's five-up invul. Implaceable determination. That's relentless. I think that's relentless. I'm absolutely sure that's relentless. I'm just going to go and absolutely double check. Implacable determination. Where are you now? The invisible. Ah, yeah, relentless. So his command squad is relentless, which is good. I definitely think relentless on a command squad is handy if you're taking a veteran weapon team or you're taking sniper rifles. But with this guy, you want a melee squad, so power swords and things. And his special rules are cold steel and courage which gives units around him a buff 
I believe it is Furious Charge and Counter-Attack, but I will just go and double check. Yeah. Uh, all friendly units from Astral Military in 6 inches have Counter-Attack and Furious Charge. Sorry, I got that wrong. Gung-Ho, he must always issue and accept challenges. This is okay. I mean, I don't like it, but your strength 6, so you're pretty powerful. Fearless, Monster Hunter, so he rerolls to wounding as monstrous creatures, so he's rerollable fours in most places. Senior Officer, Smash, so he's got one attack strength 10 if you want it. Voice of Command, and that's it. So, Strachan is an absolute beast. The only thing he doesn't have is Eternal Warrior. So that means if he takes one crack missile, or equivalent to the face, he is dead. And that sucks. That really really sucks i think if you're gonna make this guy an absolute unit make him this guy is the man of steel he is that he is a cybernetic dude why is he not gone into the warrior i say anyway moving on nork deadog i love nork deadog he's got a lot cheaper as well he's gone from like 100 points to 85 and he is attached to a company command squad sort of like a bodyguard and he's weapon skill four Listed skill 3, strength and toughness 5, 3 wounds, initiative 3, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 4 plus armor save. Which is pretty standard for an Ogryn, but I think he's got slightly better armor. And I think an Ogryn is weapon skill 3. Mm, might be weapon skill 4. I'll just double check. Mm -hmm. Where are you now? Nope, Ogryn's are weapon skill 4. So what he gains looks like is an initiative point, and was it an attack? And some leadership. There's so many things in this book. Uh, you gain a leadership point, an attack, and an initiative. Which is pretty good. I mean, he's a lot of points, but that's not bad. He has a ripper gun, which is strength 5 AP dash, 3 shots, and frag grenades. Uh, feel no pain, so he's even more survivable, but he has no invol. Hammer of wrath, which means he gets to make a strength 5 attack, initiative 10. Uh, stubborn, very bulky, which means he takes up... Three transport capacity if you put him in a chimera. Uh, lookout R, which is the uh, rule that Kel has about uh, lookout, sir. So you can actually use Nork to tank wounds before you even put them on Kel if you attach them all to one command squad. And his rules also include heroic sacrifice, loyal to the end, and thunderous headbutt, which do things. And those things are probably quite hilarious. Heroic Sacrifice. If Nork loses his last wound in melee, he may immediately make his full complement of attacks against the unit that killed him in the same initiative step, even if he's already attacked. These attacks may be exchanged for Thunderous Headbutt as described below. Nork rerolls to hit and to wound when making these attacks. He is then killed, removed as a casualty. So that means you get to make four strength five attacks with Shred and rerolls to hit. That's a lot. And if you've been killed in a challenge, because you can, because you're a character, you can issue and accept challenges. That is basically two rounds of attacks from Nort Dedog against a Necron Lord with an over with a war scythe. Admittedly, if it's a power fist, brilliant. If it's a um, power sword from a Space Marine Initiative um, 4 or something, it's less good because you still only get one round of attacks, but you still get to attack, so no Eldar trickery. Loyal to the end. Nook must declare a glorious intervention whenever possible and automatically pass the test to take a friendly character's place in a challenge. So, same as with Creed, you, if he gets challenged out, uh, you can step Nork in. In addition, a Commissar or Lord Commissar will never shoot Nork as a result of summary execution. Not that anybody would try. I mean, that's excellent. It basically gives you a good way of keeping him alive instead of having your opponent be able to pick him off. And the Thunderous Headbutt, uh, which you can exchange a Heroic Sacrifice attack for, is one attack, strength plus three, AP three, concussive, making him strength eight, AP three, concussive. Ow! If you're rerolling to hit and rerolling to wound, that basically is an insta gib to everybody who's not a Tyranid monstrous creature in a challenge, or anyone who doesn't have Eternal Warrior is dead to that hit. Admittedly, you might get an armor save, but if you are a Space Marine Captain, Nork will hit you. Well, you'll hit Nork, probably kill him, and then he'll smack you with a strength 8 AP3 attack that will insta-kill you. Which is fabulous. I think that's a really nice option for 85 points. Plus, he's got a really badass piece of artwork as well. I've just had a look at his 
um, artwork. Uh, Knight Commander Pask. He is um, an upgraded tank commander. Um, his weapon skill... Uh, he doesn't have a stat on He's just ballistic skill 4. So his uh, Lehman Rust that he takes control of is ballistic skill 4. He can issue tank orders, which um, I will discuss next time. So all the rules regarding tank commanders, Lehman Rust commander, and tank orders will be in next episode. So make sure you subscribe for that. He has the Warlord trait Old Grudges. So his um, squad... Squadron has preferred enemy against a single codex, which is absolutely fabulous. And he has a rule called Crack Shot. Shots made by Pasky's Russ can reroll armor penetration, including glancing or pens, but the second result must be kept. Furthermore, the turret mounted weapon gains a bonus. So that's, well, first off, rerolling armor penetration is brilliant. If you've got Laz cannons, that can really save your butt. Or if you're trying to shred a vehicle and you need some sixes with heavy bolters, that's good as well. Furthermore, the turret weapon gains an additional benefit. So, a battle cannon, vanquish a battle cannon, demolish a siege cannon, or eradicate a nova cannon. So that's a regular rust, a vanquisher, which is a single shot weapon, the demolisher, which is um, a strength 10 AP2 large blast, or the eradicator, which is strength 6 AP4 ignores cover. He can reroll to hit. So you can reroll the scatter dice in the 2d6 if you need it, which is brilliant. Exterminator auto cannon or punisher gatling cannon has rending. Oh, this hurts. This really hurts. Punisher Gatling Cannon with Rending is going to kill... Think Assault Cannon on steroids with Rending. You lose a point of strength and you become AP Dash, but you have 20 shots with Rending. That hurts. And even Exterminator Auto Cannon. That is an Assault Cannon on steroids. Four shots, strength 7 AP4 with Rending. Ow. Seriously, ow. That will kill... That will probably at least pen a Land Raider almost every time. When firing an execute, uh, how does one English? When firing an execution, a plasma cannon, pass may choose to fire an incandescent plasma blast instead of the regular profile. So instead of firing three shots at small blast, you can go heavy one, large blast, blind, gets hot, strength seven AP two, thirty six inch range. So you basically swap three small blasts for one big one that has blind. I don't think this is very good. I mean, a large blast is great, but three small blasts will probably cause more wounds. The blind is a bonus. I don't think it's that good, though. And I think he costs 50 points. I'll just check. Um, well, a tank commander costs... Uh, is it 30? Oh, Pask costs... Where is he? Crying out loud. Lost him. I've lost Knight Commander Pask, ladies and gentlemen. He is... 70 points. So you pay 30 points for the tank commander, and then you take Pask for another 40. So he costs 70 points. That's a nice cost, but it does make even a basic Lehman Russ becomes... Oh, what is it? A basic Lehman Russ... Well, the cheapest Lehman Russ, which is um, the Exterminator, becomes 200 points. But for that, he becomes a HQ, and he gets a lot of hitting power, in this case, Rending. And that is the unique HQs, um, with all their bits of war gear, all their little bits of rules, and I think they are very useful. I don't like Commissar Yarrick as much as I should. He's a great buff, but he's not a great warlord, believe it or not. I wouldn't have him as my warlord most of the time unless I wanted all those extra leadership buffs. I'd want proper orders. Uh, Creed and Kel. I like Creed. I like Kel, but I don't know. He's a bit expensive. He's still 60 points. Um, to pay for Kel, I don't know, but Creed is excellent. Uh, Strachan is a beast, but he dies too easily. Even for toughness four with a three plus save, he dies too easily. One crap missile, and he's toast. But it is pretty hitty if you can get him there. Nort Deadog, if you've got the points, take Nort Deadog. He's fantastic. He's great for his points, and he might just win you a challenge and get you a Warlord point. Knight Commander Pask, if you've got 40 points flying around and you've got a tank commander, take him. If you've got 70 points flying around in a free HQ slot and you've got a Russ in your list, definitely take him. You'll make that Russ so much better. So that concludes this video. I hope you found it useful and I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the next part will be regular HQ. So the company command squad, uh, the Lord Commissar and all the things that don't actually take up slots but are HQs. So thank you for watching. Uh, my name is Michael and I will see you again.